Hello! Welcome to the Colorful Creativity Podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 61. You can find me on Mind Everywhere as Kralaline. I have an Etsy shop, kralaline.etsy.com and there is a Ravelry group for the podcast and my yarn, which is the Colorful Creativity Group on Ravelry. So, welcome everyone. Welcome to, back to all returning viewers and welcome to all new viewers. Happy you're trying me out. Hope you like it here and subscribe too. Whoa, <laughs> that's been a busy two weeks. Um, I've been multiple whipping, I've started new projects, I finished some projects, well, probably one. Um, and, well, I can't knit now. Wonder why. Um, I've been knitting a lot and, well, I also did something wrong with my shoulder, so I have a tendonitis here. It hurts like a lot. So as of this Monday, it's now Wednesday while I'm recording, I haven't been knitting. I did two rows on my Find Your Fate yesterday evening because I was like, I want to do something. I'm bored out of my mind in between dying. So knitting is always my go to thing to do to keep my hands busy to keep my head busy so yeah i'll show you a lot of whips i've been working on but apparently it was a bit too much for my shoulder and well i have to find something else to do and i found a big pile of books i still want to read so all will be well i will not be bored out of my mind but I just have to find the time and the relaxedness state of reading, something like that. So I'm going to start right away with finished objects because I have some. I would normally say this is a hoe, but in this case it's a faux because uh, it's a shop sample. Um, I was knitting these for myself, but then I tried it on and apparently I have started to knit quite a lot tighter. I changed needles and didn't accommodate for more stitches. I already ripped it once. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna happen twice. So I finished this one and it's a shop sample so people can feel how the yarn knits up and they can see how it looks with contrasting heels and toe. Um, also you can see how the yarn uh, knits up because I think I want to do that again and this is a Hermione's everyday sock pattern I'll show you closer I really love that I still have to make a pair for myself um, the yarn is a colorful smooth sock for cuff heel and toe in radioactive and the the sock itself is my smooth BFL sock, which was a trial and I like the merino version better, so I guess I will stick to that in spring green, I think. I think I will dye that color again because I really love it. Then I cast this on on the 4th of January and I recorded a podcast before that, the previous one, but I did show you the yarn in my plan with it. They're all already finished. I knit like crazy on these. So they're finished. The first one was finished in two days. The second one was finished a week later, again in one and a half days, two days, something like that. Um, the yarn is Opal, Opal over the rainbow. And I was selling this in my shop, but it's sold out now. Somebody snagged all the walls that were left. Um, these socks are a size 32 EU size. And I think they might even fit her until the size, size 35. I used a rib so it will be tight now and stretch with when she grows, I hope. It's a three by one rib and I just made it up myself, the whole pattern. I wrote down all the notes on my Ravelry if you're interested. 
I uh, started at the cuff so I could also cut off the toes and make them longer if necessary. So yeah, <laughs> sucks, sucks, sucks. Then let's continue with whips in my department of ma making socks bag by Chetty Cats Creations. It is a very, very small start. Uh, I probably showed this to you also last time. I'm trying to get the ball band out. Let's see. This yarn and this is Petale Strumpf und Sport Wolle Vierfach. So it's a regular sock yarn and um, oh I uh, used I joined in on the commercial yarn along knit along by Stranded Dye Works uh, by Amy with this pair and also this pair is going in there and I also joined in on Carla's a long <laughs> make along whatever you do crochet knit spin uh, whatever you do along. It's, that one is Dutch though, for, for the international viewers. So I am only this far because I was kind of socked out after that sock and it started to hurt so I was like, I have to cut down. But I want to do a row in this and a row in that and I want to cast on so I have something when I can and when I want to go somewhere I want to knit. So yeah, um, I'm knitting this on a 2.5 millimeter high high sharp. I knit the other socks, uh, the rainbow socks on this as well. So. Pretty standard, going to use the same pattern again, the same uh, idea. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a ribbing on it because I can, uh, I might. It depends on how the yarn knits up, if I want to break it a little might do a blueberry waffle not sure yet maybe just something simple and stuck in that so that's easier for my shoulder just plain knitting um next up where is it there it is i'll show a photo on instagram of my chair full of whips and stuff because after recording i can finally put it away so in this cute, the little grey girl project bag with cats, I have my hand dyed um, Cash Merino blend to try and of course I put a DPN in there. I have something very weird looking I think, but I have a heel. I've turned the heel, I picked up all the stitches and that's the big disadvantage of DPNs. Here you go. Oh, it is really nice. I hope it has enough stretch in it, but I haven't tried it on yet because, well, with DPNs, I'm always a little bit afraid. And if you see the color change, yeah, <laughs> the weather is really, really awful. We are having a snow day, actually. And it's not pretty snow, it's like the wet slush. But uh, it stays for a bit and then it's slush, but really, really big snowflakes. So we're probably gonna get more now. It's really turning dark again. I thought, oh, the sun is out, I can record now. So totally not like you're used to uh, and know me. I am knitting this on Jago DPNs, 2.5 millimeter. This, uh, this is where I was last time. I only had this much of the cuff. Like I was done with the cuff. I did the heel flap. I did the heel turn. And now I am in the gusset decreases. So. And yes, I am pretty okay with it. DPN knitting. It does take me a little more uh, strength to make sure I do not get any lettering 
And apparently, oh no, there it is. It was popping in my side. I'm a magic looper. I, I never learn to put my DPNs away nice and somewhere I can totally see them. So next up is another new calf song. And this is in my fondant fiber handmade by Deb bag. It is the start of a child size antler cardigan. And the antler cardigan is by Tim Can Mix. Oh, I forgot to tell you the pattern I'm using for the sock on DPNs. It's a Rose City Roller by Mara Catherine Briner. Uh, that's a free pattern, I think, on Ravelry. Um, here's the antler by Tin Can Knits. I don't even print out the Rose City Roller pattern because I kind of know it by heart. It's just the numbers you need for the heel flap that I have to look up. And even that is going better now. So I have here two cuffs and I cast on immediately on my long circular with two at a time. And I actually managed. Um, it is a bit odd because your row ends in the middle. So this is the first one. So you do first cuff fully first and then second cuff fully first. Instead of uh, that I use the technique I normally did with two at a time cuff down socks. So I, I would cast on the second cuff on a different needle and then transfer it. So it would be first cuff, uh, first side, second cuff, first side, second cuff, second side, and then first cuff, second side. Now you, yeah, you actually do the first cuff fully and then the second cuff fully and you end in the middle. So you, most of the times I knit one part extra. I am knitting this in a four to six year old size. So I need about 600 yards, which is exactly what I have. So I hope I have enough of Merino, a uh, big Merino by Drops. And this is a rusty orange. I hope the color is coming through because it's really getting dark. <laughs> um, I'm knitting these on high high interchangeables. The cuff was a four millimeter and the rest is five millimeter. I have not swatched it because, well, the kit is just two and one month. So I think a four to six year old will be big enough for a while. But I'm not sure when I will finish. It might take me half a year. I don't know. And well, I do have the tendency at the moment that I want to finish things. But it, I have to stay reasonable now with my shoulder. So some projects that do not give me that much joy will not come first. I'd rather be knitting something I really like and something for myself actually. So next up in my huge Frog Peak Creations bag, my sock monkey on wheels is the beast and I had to stop in the middle of a row again because then the pain got just too freaking much and probably because I had to do a lot of techniques in one row I can show you where I was last time <laughs> it's like only these couple of rows just like nothing to me but with 822 stitches, it is actually a lot. I think I'm even adding, yeah, I'm also decreasing stitches out. So I probably have the same amount of stitches. Not sure. Oh, that's very handy of me. I've got another copy of the antler pattern here. I had lost it. I put it in here. So I did five rows and I'm in the sixth now 
and I have like five, five, 19 to go after I finish it. So 20 more rows. So help me, please. It's brioche, it's purling, it's everything. It's, it's decreasing, it's increasing. Um, it's gonna be really, really pretty. I saw a few on Instagram this week from Vogue Knitting Live and I was really, really like, oh my God, I want to knit mine. But this is going really slow. Um, I'm knitting these on 3.5 millimeter higher, higher sharps. Pattern, speckle and pop shawl by Stephen West, the mystery knit along last year. I am using singles yarn, merino singles, combined with some pops of color. Um, these two are my own hand dyed. This one is not in use at the moment. This is called Sangria. This one is Shirley Temple on the Rocks. And this is Trelis, her yarn. And this is uh, Mandala on her Zeus base. That's how she calls it. I am calling it Colorful Merino Singles, just like it is. I like to have my names simple. <laughs> it's already colorful something. So, um, I really like how it looks. I probably won't have enough of this one. We'll see how it turns out, but lots of people had to change into their second main color. So I guess I will too. Then the color pops I am using. This set. Where is it? There's the wrong one. This one. This set of color lovers. Uh, yeah, the color lover set by Devon Sun Yarns I got from a friend. It's the same base as my colorful smooth sock. So I added so really, really bright in my radioactive colorway. And then I missed an orange, so I added this ultra bright orange in a merino extra soft yarn that I had lying around from a field dye experiment. And I really, really like how it looks. You really, really need all the seven colors. In a set of five, I always tend to miss some colors. So I really like to make it seven. I'm not sure if you're gonna see any progress on this soon. Then, yes, there's a lot of then and there's a lot of projects going in my Jibiro sews Star Wars Halloween bag. Well, I don't care. I love the Star Wars theme, so do not notice the Halloween part. I'm just looking at the Star Wars. I want to use it the whole year. In here is my Find Your Fade shawl. Let me unpack the beast. It is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Here's the start. And here we go. And this pattern is by Andrea Maori. Andrea Renee Knits. Most of you have probably seen it. My pattern is full of notes and things. And my pattern is in black and white, so it's horrible. But maybe this gives you an idea of the size of it. It's gonna be a huge one, which is what I want, because I also want a huge shawl. And this is actually at the moment my go-to knitting, so I can do something because it's only uh, garter, so only knitting and no purling. Just one center stitch and the rest is all the same because I'm at the point where you don't have to increase anymore. Yay, yeah, I managed to finally reach that. in. Color four, I think. The first color I'm using, or I've used, is Herbstblatt Regina yarn, meant to be, in her soft sock base. Hazel soft sock, I think. Then I dyed a mm, fade to mint, mint to fade, 
something in between to fade between the two colors on my colorful soft sock. Then this is Quickly Green on Scrum Base by Undercover Otter, also the same base. And this is Spoil Base by Craftfulness. Uh, here's the ball, <laughs> which is also the same base in the colorway bullet journal. And what's coming next? I'm not sure. I might change up the purples. I, I definitely don't know yet. I have this for the next three, but I might be too bored. I want to add some teal speckles or something to a purple. And maybe then even go from go from purple to teal or something, something darker. I'll have to see what I am up to. So yeah, I think I made quite some progress on it. I was before that uh, lace section and I'm already nearing the next lace section. But this will keep me busy for a week <laughs> until I'm there with only one or two rows a day. Oh, it's difficult if you're such a busy, busy bee and you always keep your hands busy. But it's also good because I take the time to sit and just feel and think and not... Where I used to push my feelings away with food, I think knitting kind of took over. So now I have the time to think and do stuff and be mindful, etc. I guess my coach would be really, really proud of me for saying that. Nothing happens without a reason. So, there's one more project on the needles. And, and this is in my... I see you checking out my ball sack. This was the Advent Calendar project bag. And in here is something some of you also might know. And yes, I finally printed it in color. It is a Sunset High Weight Sweater by Caitlin Hunter. I only cast on and I dyed the yarn first. This is my yoke so far. The short rows are already in as you can see on this side. And this is what we're looking at. It's a purple with yellow, all hand dyed. So the purple is a little bit semi-solid to tonal, uh, more tonal than semi-solid. There is a, li a little variation in it. It's really pretty, if I may say so myself. And here's the yellow and red, pinkish red. The light's going out. Sorry, the colors are not really true. And the main part of the body will be no rainbows without rain. So these together, I think it will be really pretty. It's actually the colors that are in here. So the, the, the reddish pink, the yellow, and here, the purple and navy. So I'm really looking forward to how that is working out. But this one is putting so much stress on my shoulders because I do a, a two-handed stranded knitting. I'm not good at it, so I probably cramp my shoulders and like this, which is really bad. Uh, all the stress from over the holidays for my grand also probably made me do this without noticing and now it's coming down and now it's all stuck and hurtful etc. Um, I did do a teeny tiny swatch for this and then I measured it and I was like okay I need uh, one more stitch per inch I need four inch ease well if I take one size bigger than my own size or actually than my real size for the four inch ease. I like it with two inch ease. Calculating stitches around the whole body. Yep, we're gonna do that. So, uh, I'm winging it. Yes, I am. Um, 
I don't like my sweater with that much ease. I like it a bit more uh, figure forming, hugging thingy. Uh, I think because it's super washed, it will also stretch a little. Um, yeah. So I'm knitting this on a 3.75 millimeter needle. I'm not sure if that was what the pattern suggested. I am. Oh, I need to tell you about all the struggles with it. What did the pattern say? 3.5 millimeter. Yeah, I went up a needle size because I know I'm a tight knitter. And also because this is a very, very squishy yarn. It's the soft sock, so it's, it's really nice and thick sock yarn with 400 meters. So it is still a fingering. But it's a bit plump and yeah, I love it. I did the same thing with the Find Your Fade. I went to format 3.5 to a 4 millimeter. I was like, yeah, totally can do that. So we'll see what happens and how much yarn I need. I hope I have enough and I hope I dyed enough because I went like, oh, I can split this cane in three bits and then probably have enough of all. Fingers crossed. Um, what was I going to show you? Oh yeah, the trouble. I, I cast on this on a 40 centimeter needle so I could knit around. Then uh, all the stitches added from the short row section and after etc. I switched to a 60 millimeter which was not quite nice. And then I went to an 80 millimeter uh, centimeter of course uh, needle all interchangeable, all with the life stitches and changing only one needle, etc. Um, oh, I know why I changed needle size. Because of the stranded knitting. I am knitting this with a 3.5 usual normal needle for the normal uh, straight stockinette part. But I really, really am a tight knitter with stranded knitting. I could have gone up probably more sizes, but I thought I would like a nice and tight knitting. Um, so I kept changing the length of my cable. I was like at 80 or 100 centimeters. I tried magic looping it and it didn't work out. So oh, it was a mess. I kept changing, changing, changing. And now I'm at this size and I can zoom around. So. Probably when I have all the stitches on, I might go bigger because it's too full. But for now it's okay. But no clue when I will be working on that again. That were all whips. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I had a lot of whips next to me. I, uh, I put a photo on Instagram of my chair of whips. There's two nice chairs in our living room and two couches. I used to sit on a couch, but it's better for my back to sit on the chair. <laughs> now I just claimed one chair and put all my whips in it. Instead of the basket I had under the side table in the corner of two couches. Oops. So, let me take a sip. So yeah. I guess we are at acquisitions. And this is actually a really small part. Because I only have one thing. But that one thing is awesome. Look at that. This is a project bag by the little gray girl. And because I like my cat bag so much, I'm really, really happy. See, this is the same. The same one. I'm really, really happy I got this one from Gemma. And go check her out because she has some lovely things left in her shop. And I, she might even still have some unicorn bags. Inside is a very nice gray, a light gray. So you can very see inside very good. I like it when the inside is light so you can see what's in your bag. And I also got this cute little, where are you, without the glare, there you go, the little gray girl pin button. I'm not pinning it on, 
because it's cotton fabric and I don't want to poke holes that don't go out anymore. So I will put it on something else. So yes, my one and only acquisition. I did order some other things, but they are probably still somewhere over the big blue ocean or something. Not sure where they are. So I'm grabbing some things I want to tell you about for the shop. Which is that these pretties are back in stock. Wrist rollers in all colors. So the yellow as well. I bought the most of the yellow now instead of the least. I'm a yellow lover too. I'm wearing mine today and I love it. I don't even feel it. You know, you have those bracelets you feel and this one I, I forget I'm wearing it because it's so comfortable and because it's silicone it just it takes up your skin warmth and it's really nice and warm. So wrist rulers back in stock, also still in stock. No rainbows without rain on colorful socks. At the moment there are I think five skeins left. So might be six. So check it out if you want a chance on this. Um, I have a big project coming up so I'm not sure when I'll be able to dye more. It will come back at smooth sock as well and also as a sock set. But for now I only have this left. The sock yarn is already sold out. There's only colorful soft sock left. And because most of you want to know how it looks knit up, I'm showing you this sock knit with it. And you can see there's stripy pooling going on here. And this one is going a little bit more crazy after the heel. These were knit by my mom, so I'm not sure how many stitches she used. I think 64, but not, not fully sure. I think it's a two millimeter needle. She's using these long DPNs and yeah, what can I say about those? There are bent like wobbly wobbly. <laughs> and she's a really loose knitter, so she needs to go down a lot of needle sizes to, to have the same tight fabric that I like because she knit these for me as a shop sample or to wear. <laughs> I'm still indetermined. I wore them a few times, but I think they still look very good. I will cleaner them and make them a shop sample again for my upcoming markets. The first one I can finally announce, I uh, signed up for the Knit Tea Retreat in Cardiff uh, in October, the 20th and 21st, I think it was, or the 21st and the 22nd, somewhere around the 20th of October. Uh, it's in Cardiff in the UK. I will be joining the retreat, but I will also be selling there at the marketplace. So be ready. I think it will be open to the public as well and not just to retreat goers. I'll be packing as much yarn as I can. I booked my flights with two suitcases so I can take like 400 skeins of yarn, I guess, like 40 kilos. A little bit of uh, stitch markers and stuff, but yeah, I'm, I'm already looking forward to it. I'm already planning for it because, well, we are going to remodel our kitchen and that means that I won't be able to dye yarn for three months. So <laughs> it's gonna be tight. I have to plan everything after that and make sure that we don't have those things uh, at home. I may be able to dye at my mom's or at my in-laws. So then I can at least do some production. So yes, that's what I wanted to tell you about shop and shop news and stuff. And yeah, I guess that was pretty much it. This morning I had a very interesting um, appointment. I think I could call it that. 
uh, I had a chat with a friend. We are going to host a creative mindfulness retreat in April uh, in uh, Twente, so local Dutch. Um, it's it's in nature, far far away from the big cities, etc. Um, there's gonna be only quiet and peace and of course there will be chatting and there will be uh, a space for just laughter etc but it's also going to be to come back to yourself to have a little bit of time for you um, we're gonna do some mindful techniques on crafting um, mindful eating mindful walking one-on-one -on -one coaching is also something we want to uh, incorporate there um, yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun we really are looking forward to that so we are finally putting uh, crossing our T's as you say dotting our I's is what we say um, yeah I'm really really looking forward to that and announcing that so if you are interested in that please let me know so we can put you uh, on a email newsletter thingy um, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> so that's my April already uh, checked. And uh, I'm dying here now for a big project, which is a collaboration. So yeah, never a dull moment here, <laughs> especially not when you can't knit. But now I can at least read all the mindfulness books and incorporate all those things into my class about mindful crafting. So yeah, um, I'll stop chatting because the light's really going and this is gonna look uglier and uglier by the minute um i'll see you back when i see you back i hope i can knit again in two weeks uh, or actually earlier so i have something to show you and i will get some acquisitions in the, the upcoming two weeks fingers crossed they will um if not i might just take a little longer to heal and um to have something actually to tell you so see you back later bye bye